Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. Today with us, Tom Edmonds, and Tom is the Executive Director of the Southampton History Museum. Tom joins us as a repeat guest. He will speak about future plans of the museum and what's on the horizon in terms of new exhibits. Let's all welcome Tom Edmonds. And Tom, it is a great pleasure to have you back on Successful Philanthropy. And my first question is, what exactly is the Southampton History Museum? Wow, how much time do we have? Um, our, our biggest, my biggest mission is to promote the history and culture of uh, the village of Southampton and beyond our region. And so we, we are 129 years old and we've been collecting objects and materials and maps and records and diaries uh, all those years. So my job is to interpret that, to spread the word about history and Southampton's very, very long history. We were settled uh, 30,000 years ago by Paleo Indians. And so we actually go back that far. We cover that period all the way up to the present. And we have, how do we do that? We have four historic properties that we manage with 14 buildings. Two of those buildings, three of those buildings actually go back to the 1600s. So we, we preserve our, our uh, architectural history that we have. Uh, and we do that by having open air exhibits, the Pelotro Silver Shop on South Main Street, on, I'm sorry, on Main Street was built in 1680. And it is the oldest continuously open trade shop in the Americas. That's, that's quite a claim. Um, and it's always been a trade shop for 380 years. Um, so that's one thing that we manage. We also have the Rogers Mansion, which uh, Jody has a slide for. That's that's a Gilded Age uh, mansion that was developed. Actually, the center of that was built in 16, 1650, and it was laughed, last lived in by Sam Parrish in, in 1936. So that's another wide scope of history we cover when you come here. Um, Halsey House is our uh, another property on South Main Street. It is the oldest wood frame building in New York State. And uh, uh, the property was settled in, in 1648. And, and uh, so we, we, we talk about those three buildings. Those are our main buildings. And uh, we open them up to the public. We, for school kids, we have, we charge nothing for children to come to the properties or for education programs. We also do a heavy senior program where we uh, have, we have right now, the house has about 30 senior citizens in for a special program. Um, in the future, uh, Heart of the Hamptons is going to be across the street from us. And I've talked to the uh, director, Molly Bishop, and we're gonna have lunch and learn. So people who need food, um, doesn't have to be just a quick in and out, they can stay for lunch. And we'll have a program on Southampton history. Very uh, interesting. and I. I I want to say that when you come into Southampton, there is a sign that says established in 1640. And that sign has always been very meaningful to me because, well, a place without a history isn't a very exciting place. But I think people, once they learn about the history of Southampton and the surroundings, it makes the whole place more exciting and and to learn about people that lived in a place uh, years before, centuries before, always makes something a little more interesting. And so I'm so happy that we have this museum, the Southampton History Museum, and that the community stands behind preserving the culture and history of our community. Now, Tom, I wanted to ask you also, you mentioned that the museum was about 120 years old or 130 years old. I believe it was founded in 1898 and then incorporated in 1910. Who was the group that started that museum? I, I, I did some digging in to find out who started this. And I found that 
Uh, 80% of the people who founded this were women. Uh, and most people don't think of that, but they were not Mrs. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. They were actually standalone women who founded that. And many of those women were active in the suffragist movement. Uh, and Elizabeth Halsey is one. Um, she, she was the town historian and she was an activist for women's rights and, and uh, getting New York State to, to allow uh, women to vote. And that, that's, our, that's our beginnings. And, and uh, you know, we've been trying to keep up with, uh, with past and, and matching it up with current events. And our, our education programs are geared towards uh, matching local history with New York State. That's a curriculum requirement for New York State. So we're very mindful to talk about local and state history at the same time. Which is very exciting to me. It's exciting to me as a woman to know that women or most of the women involved were also activists and trying to move forward women's rights and women's issues. And Tom, you once told me that many of the institutions in Southampton, the Southampton Hospital and other groups were also founded by women. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that is. We had a, uh, we celebrated the Southampton Hospital's 100th anniversary. I think it was 2000, 2015 or something like that. And, and women were instrumental in, in putting that organization together. In fact, uh, Sam Parrish, the, the man who lived in this house that I'm sitting in, the Rogers Mansion, he donated the land for the Southampton Hospital. And uh, we have a lot of connections with, with the hospital, I'm happy to say. Yes, and for our community, the hospital, Stony Brook Southampton Hospital, is really the only hospital in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. And I happen to be a member of the Southampton Hospital Association, which is the governing board of the hospital. I've been involved for many, many years, and I chaired their big gala in 2010, 11, and then 2013. We raised over five million in those uh, three years from that one gala. And I can say, right. we're, we're here to talk about the Southampton History Museum, but while we're on the subject of Southampton, we have to talk about the Southampton Hospital because a community without a good hospital really is not a community where people want to live. So now getting back to the Southampton History Museum, you have a very exciting program moving forward. And I would love to hear about some of the upcoming programs that will take place this spring and then in the summer. And uh, people in the community are interested in attending your events and seeing the exhibits because it makes their life more interesting. Of course, everyone's in the Hamptons for the beach and for uh, the beautiful weather in the summer and the great restaurants and the social life, of course. And it's the playground for the rich and famous. And then also the playground for many, many other people. But let's talk about your upcoming exhibits. Well, um, I want to talk about Puppies, Ponies, and Pussycats, Tales of Southampton. That's a joke, get it? Tales of Southampton. That's so cute. so one of the, the we, we matched a lot of our paintings and photographs and objects that we had in our collection. We matched them up with contemporary images of people with their pets. Gene, you submitted a photograph, uh, which is really great. But I want to, I want to show this really great painting of Blanchette and Ramona, uh, from, and it's from 1831. And if you look at these two Basset hounds, they are tethered together and their names are right above their heads and they're attached to the neck, which just makes me think they're obviously married. They can't move, they're, they're locked together, go, going and, and looking at right at you. Um, so that's one of my favorite images uh, from this exhibit, which opens up in May. Uh, we have a members preview on Saturday the 30th, and then it opens on uh, May 3. Another image I want to show that ties us in with the uh, Southampton Hospital is Rose de Rose. Are you familiar with the uh, 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 Varnum de Rose Foundation, Jean? I am not, no, but they, I'd love to learn more. It, it was set up in 1970s by Rose de Rose, and this is an image of her holding her cat. She's about 18 or 20. 
And if you look at this photograph, her eyes are as big as her cats. And that's a big cat she's holding. Rose de Rose uh, was a debutante in New York City and lived with her parents on Hill Street in a 20 acre estate that's still intact. When she died in the 70s, she left a foundation that both the Southampton Hospital and the Southampton History Museum still get from. So when she donated the property to the hospital, uh, you know, they had a estate sale and, and sold everything and the money got the proceeds from, from uh, her estate. But there was a woman who uh, a couple of years ago used to work at the Southampton Hospital. Her name is Marcia Kenny, and I believe you know her. Uh, she found all of Rose de Rose's uh, archival collection or photographs in a dumpster at the hospital. A maintenance man had mistakenly just thought it was a bunch of junk and threw it out. Marsha Kenny did a dumpster dive and brought over boxes and boxes of photographs, uh, photographs of Rose de Rose. So, uh, I, and she, she stayed in South, Southampton. She never got married. There's a second photograph of Rose de Rose as a young girl. This is her about 12 holding her cat. I wonder if that's the same cat. And she's with her dog and she's in sort of a peasant costume. I, you know, she's dressing up for an event and uh, Rose de Rose never married. She stayed in Southampton. Uh, she became very, very large and she raised chickens on her estate on Hill Street. And she used to give them away to friends. She didn't sell them. She gave them a bucket of eggs to people she liked. And uh, she is still known by people. She used to go into the local hardware store to get feed. And she didn't live in the mansion that was built by her parents. She lived in the caretaker's cottage along with her chickens. They lived in the same little house on this property on Hill Street. So Jean, think about that. Next time you go down Hill Street, there's a huge section that has not been developed starting um, at Halsey Neck. And it's right there at the corner. The estate's still there. It's being well taken care of by a new owner. Uh, but I just thought you should know that. It's just a, such a good story. And what a great name, right? Rose de Rose. It's a great story. And to hear a story like that of someone who truly loves animals, loved her chickens, and then decided uh, to give her uh, estate to Southampton Hospital and then Southampton History Museum, well, that's a true story of a real philanthropist. And for our audience, we are with Tom Edmonds. He is the executive director of the Southampton History Museum. And he's speaking a little bit about an upcoming exhibit and also giving us a little information about some of the people who lived back in the last century and some of the wonderful things they've done for the community. And of course, if we don't keep records of people and their good works and we don't keep photos and videos well we can't keep history going and moving forward and for most people history is very interesting because a place without a history well it's not a very exciting place now tom i wanted to bring up before we talk a little bit more about that exhibit how grateful I am to you for having made an introduction to, uh, for me to the Southampton African American Museum. And just about a year ago, I called you and I asked you to uh, take an interview on my show. And that day you were busy and you said, I wanna reconnect you to Brenda Simmons, who's the executive director of the Southampton African American Museum. And, I connected with her and lo and behold, I interviewed her. And then I became involved with the Southampton African American Museum. And I attribute my involvement, of course, to Brenda Simmons, but also to you, Tom Edmonds, because you were the one who reconnected me to Brenda Simmons and the Southampton African American Museum. So thank you very much, Tom, and you're a real, community player. And what is a community player? Someone who may be involved with one institution, but also sees the need to connect people to other institutions that might need a little financial assistance or other assistance. So thank you very much. Tom, if you want to continue on about upcoming exhibits, sure. we'd love to hear. Uh, Jean, th thanks for saying that. 
Um, yeah, the, the next photograph is Ponies as Butterflies. And what it is in uh, Southampton over by the new Moses Park entrance on Moses Road, there used to be uh, a, sh a horse showgrounds. And this photograph shows uh, two little girls sitting in a pony cart and their two beautiful little ponies are dressed up like butterflies. It's, it's a photograph I think just needs to be seen. It's been in our collections for 120 years. The, the next slide is shows uh, an installation view. I'm still putting it together, but if you look on the left-hand side, there's about 15 iron, cast iron door stops in the shape of dogs. Those were given to us by Myra Weiser, uh, a friend, uh, Gene, that we, we share a lot with. So Dr. Frank and Myra Weiser gave us those uh, for the exhibit. And uh, for those of you that don't know them, they're, they're big hospital supporters. Um, and so the, there's a close-up of one dog uh, uh, doorstop that I want to show, and he's got a very sad face with a, a blue-green collar. I thought this was a very funny image. The next slide shows sort of a grouping of some of the historic objects we have in our collection. Uh, there's some um, plates that have images of rabbits on it. There's a, a large frame with a, a a dog, a large dog, I don't know what kind of dog it is, that's protecting a little cat from other barking dogs. And uh, that's that's a really cool image. On the next slide is, uh, we paired old objects with living people, people, artists who are making images of dogs and pets. So the next slide shows uh, Dinah Maxwell Smith's work. She's paid chickens and rabbits and dogs. And so we also asked our, uh, our, our constituents to uh, submit photographs of themselves with their pets. So the next one you'll see is Eric Edwards and Bunny. So uh, he, we, we're collecting digital images now for people and we're going to be show them, showing them on the walls and also uh, on a monitor. So this was a really good uh, uh, close uh, to two people, to uh, a man and an animal who are very close. And the next one of course is Jean and her dog. Um, Jean, what's the name of your dog? I don't know if you can see the slide. I know you have several. Yes, the dog that you have a photo of is Rosita. Rosita. And the story of Rosita is she was living on a concrete slab on the island of Antigua. My youngest daughter was on a little trip to Antigua. My youngest daughter is the co-founder of a charity called Global Strays. And so she was visiting with the animal shelter down there and called Dogs and Cats of Antigua. And uh, the woman who runs that shelter said, oh, this dog has had such a sad life. We pray every day that someone will come and adopt her. So my daughter went back to the United States and then arranged for Rosita and then another dog to come to the United States. And we couldn't adopt both, but we adopted Rosita. And I have to say it was one of the best possible adoptions because Rosita is a living doll. She's sweet, she's well-behaved and very, very grateful. Now, sorry to talk about that, but I think it's no. so important for anyone who's interested in adopting a pet to know that when you adopt, they are generally very, very grateful. Uh, Tom, what else is on the horizon? Well, we're, you know, breaking out of uh, COVID like, like everybody else. We've, for two years, we've had to go internally. Uh, we have a very successful Zoom lecture series. Um, and it's, we've, in the past two years, we've had over 200,000 attendees at our Zoom lectures. And I am so proud of that. Uh, we've had, a, we have one a week. Um, last week, we focused on a, a man who who was in the Civil War and in our collection, we have his union cap that has a bullet hole through it. So uh, we have a researcher who uh, talked about, about this man, uh, Colonel Foster, and, uh, and it's such a great story about his, he almost did, he didn't make it back from the Civil War. Um, and then uh, next week we're having a lecture on Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper lived in Southampton and uh, he was quite a man about town here. Uh, some people remember seeing him. He's buried actually here and here, just outside the village and in the cemetery in 39. So that's a really good story. Um, so we do that every week. Um, and that's, we do that virtually. 
Uh, are we going to go have uh, lectures in-house? Yes, eventually we want to. There are a lot of people who are not able to manipulate Zoom or not interested. So we're figuring out the technology to, to do both so we can uh, keep our fa many fans on on our YouTube channel. Um, and what's, what happens with, if you see one lecture, you usually go through a lot of them. And we, we have 258 lectures now on our YouTube channel. So we cover quite a lot, large, a large breadth of uh, themes and people. And, and that, that is, you know, it, it's a success story after COVID. Everybody went through so many hard times and tragedies. People have lost people, but uh, we, we found a new audience and it's global. It's it, odd, oddly, maybe not, a lot of our fans are in Europe. Um, so that was a, a unexpected benefit from, from the horrible things that have, we've been going through. And what, the idea for this pet show was to be fun. You know, we needed a relief, right? Isn't everybody sick and tired of being inside and trying to be careful? We hope it stays open. We hope we have a busy summer. We do have uh, Halsey Gala back, which was a favorite for a lot of people here in the uh, in the village, uh, I think a lot of people will be excited to be out and to help us celebrate Halsey House. Um, and we have an uh, insider outsider tour. We don't know if it's going to be, uh, we have a house tour, an annual house tour that we're going to have on September 10. That's a, a, a fun fundraiser that uh, a lot of people come from Long Island all over the place to celebrate Southampton. And, and Gina, it was so nice of you to mention. Uh, the sign out front um, of our village that says founded in 1640. Uh, most people come to Southampton to have fun, or it's beautiful, or we have so many natural resources that are available to us, waters, you know, hiking, all these beautiful uh, things we can do outside. Um, a lot of people don't know why it's so beautiful. They don't know that we've been ardent in preserving our beautiful New England style village. Uh, it is something very special and because the beaches have been protected, um, we, we, uh, we, we were unique. Um, uh, preservationists in the 1890s wanted the beaches to remain open, uh, not for public bathing, but for fishermen. Fishermen used the beaches as transport. And farmers too, they would take their vegetables from village to village on the beach because roads were dirt, you know, they were muddy, they were terrible. So we, we have uh, beautiful beaches, unlike uh, Atlantic City or some of these other places that have private beaches or they've been overdeveloped. Southampton is very unique. So thanks for mentioning that, Gene. We're, we're a beautiful preserved village with natural resources, but um, a lot of people come here for fun and they were the Southampton yeah. as a brand, but they don't know why and how much hard work goes into keeping this a beautiful village. Uh, Tom, you have some terrific fundraisers during the summer and for all charities, well, the fundraising events are very important. And just for our audience, what are your major fundraisers this summer? Well, we have two. Uh, our biggest one is Halsey Gala, which celebrates the uh, the Halsey House that I mentioned before. And that's a lot of fun. It's outdoors. It's in the grass. We have a band. We have a big tent. We have a silent auction. But it's I, I think it's a nice mix of local people and summer people. And um, it's just fun. It's, it's, it's outdoors. Even if it rains, I think my favorite gala was when it rained, everybody was wet and then and carried on. Our other event is our annual house tour, which has been going outside because of COVID. Uh, maybe we'll go inside this year, but we find beautiful mansions uh, uh, to tour. And it's an opportunity for people to go behind the bridges, uh, the Pridget, privet fences. The privet fences uh, are ensure everybody's privacy, but for a price, you can go behind the privets and see how people live. And people are always interested in looking into the homes of other people for yeah. sure. Yeah. And it's just a question of curiosity, I think. And if someone wants to buy tickets to these events, how do they go about doing that? They go to our website, southamptonhistory.org, or give us a call at 631-283-2494. Uh, 
And I think that's so important to give the website. What about volunteer opportunities? Do they exist for people who want to get involved with the Southampton History Museum? We would not be here without volunteers. Volunteers organize fundraisers, uh, do research. Uh, a volunteer did the last Zoom lecture on the Civil War uh, guy and uh, it, it, all kinds of things. That man, man our thrift shop. We have a thrift shop that we run it during the summer and we always need extra help. And I think to be a volunteer is very, very important and it's very interesting. It also becomes very social because when you volunteer, you're thrown in with a group of people and generally those people are there because they have a common interest. In this case, it would be this history of Southampton. So you'll end up meeting a very nice group of people for sure. Tom, we have about one minute left and what would you like to leave the audience with? Something about the museum, something about the community? What exactly is that? I am so grateful that those that are here made it through COVID. It was very, very hard uh, for all of us, for everybody, Gene, you too. It just, uh, people lost family members, people lost their friends. Uh, we hope it doesn't come back and I'm, I'm so excited about this summer. And I'm very excited about the future. I think as a society, we are resilient. And if we just support one another, we can get through just about anything. Uh, good, well put. Yes, and hopefully we will not have um, a throwback to a COVID. And I'm excited for a wonderful summer and a great opportunity for many, many people to get involved with the community and one such group is the Southampton History Museum. Tom, you've been a great guest and I wanna thank you very much for joining Successful Philanthropy. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Tom Edmonds, he is the Executive Director of the Southampton History Museum. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Jean. Thank you.